Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Lohagad Fort. In India's Maharashtra state, there is a hill fort that sits nearly 3,400 feet above sea level. Known as Lohagad Fort, it dates at least as far back as the 1st or 2nd century BC, based on an inscription discovered in 2019. Since then, it's passed through the hands of several dynasties, at times functioning as both a living space and a treasury for storing valuables. Inscriptions found at the site suggest that Lohagad's origins are rooted in Jainism, a religion dating back to the 6th century BC. For the majority of its use, the fort was under the control of the Maratha Empire. It was also occupied by the Mughal Empire for five years. Several other dynasties ruled Lohagad for short periods as well. Everybody wanted it. The fort is located in the Western Ghats mountain range, which is considered one of India's most lush and biodiverse regions. In addition to Lohagad Fort, it's home to at least 325 globally threatened species. This incredible ancient fort now watches over this vast array of wildlife. The mountains moderate the surrounding area's tropical climate and represent one of the most telling examples of a geological feature influencing the monsoon cycle. Number 9. Lost Sun Temple in 1898, archaeologists discovered the Sun Temple of the 5th Dynasty Egyptian King Nayusera, just south of Cairo. It wasn't until late last year that they uncovered evidence that Nayusera's temple was built on top of another, older Sun Temple, dating as far back as the 25th century BC. Excavation co-director Massimiliano Nuzzolo explained that previous archaeology teams had assumed that the older construction simply represented an early building phase of Nayusera's temple. But it appears as though the older construction represents an entirely different building than the one that sits on top of it. This much is clear based on inscriptions naming kings who ruled before Nayusera, along with the remnants of two limestone columns and other architectural features. The first temple was made entirely from mud bricks, and the team found dozens of beer jars that were still intact. They date back to one or two generations before Nayusera was born. He ritually destroyed the mud brick temple to make room for the one that was built over it in his honor. The temple to Nayusera and others were dedicated to the sun god Ra. They were used as platforms for legitimizing a king's rule as the son of Ra. Nutsolo described Nayusera's temple as a place that was used for the deification of the king. In other words, to treat him like a god. It was similar in layout to the temple that stood before it, but was larger and made of stone. Only a few sun temples have been excavated. Historical sources indicate that there may be as many as six, and that they are all in or near the Abu Ghraib dig site where Nayusera's temple was uncovered. Number 8. World War II POW Camp Archaeologists in Oswestry, England, near the Welsh border, recently uncovered evidence of a World War II prisoner of war camp. The site, which once housed as many as 2,000 German POWs, consisted of several barracks scattered throughout a sports field and surrounded by farmland. Evidence suggests that the site operated from 1940 until 1948, three years after the war ended. Excavation leader John Winfer said that the condition seemed relatively comfortable, all things considered. The camp had electricity, and the inmates had access to hot showers. There were sports games, musical performances, and jobs, including carpentry, as well as a school that the younger inmates could attend. Of course, not surprisingly, the camp's overseers enjoyed much nicer and more spacious accommodations. The living conditions that both the overseers and the prisoners experienced are pretty surprising to archaeologists, who expected to encounter evidence of a much grimmer scenario. But life there wasn't exactly like summer camp either. The team found signs of violence having occurred, as well as breakouts and civil unrest. They also found a German soldier's dog tag and are hoping to learn about the man's life by tracing the serial number. By continuing to study the site, they also hope to gain a clearer picture of what daily life was like for inmates and those who ran the camp. Number 7. Small Rome Military Camp Speaking of military camps, the Slovakian capital of Bratislava is home to a Roman military camp described by experts as a small Rome. Known as the Gerulata site, it dates back between the 1st and 4th centuries. It was part of the Limes Romanus, or Roman border, 
Located roughly a 20-minute drive from the city center, it was situated along a 3,000-kilometer boundary that spanned three continents at its peak, including Europe, Africa, and Asia. Gerulata helped to protect the eastern region of Rome's Pannonia province. Today, the designated UNESCO World Heritage Site consists mostly of the foundations of ancient buildings. During its heyday, the site contained civilian settlements, a military camp, watchtowers, four burial grounds, farms, and possibly even a port. Archaeologists found a wealth of artifacts, including coins, ceramic fragments, everyday objects made from bronze and iron, amber beads, and bone jewelry at the site. The team also found a damaged Roman officer's helmet, which likely belonged to an officer who was killed in a war against the Marcomannic tribe. This little-known yet major site lost its Roman influence during the 5th century with the invasions of Attila the Hun and the migration of Slavic peoples to the area. It's possible that the last Romans to live at Gerulata traded with early Slavic tribes, but their interactions were limited and short-lived, and the site was ultimately abandoned. Number 6. Maggie's Wall on the outskirts of the small Scottish village of Dunning, there is a 20-foot-high pile of stones topped by a cross and gifts from visitors, including pennies, feathers, shells, stuffed animals, and tea candles. Written on the stones in white lettering is the statement, Maggie Wall burnt here in 1657 as a witch. At first glance, the idea of someone being burned at the stake for witchcraft makes a lot of sense. Between the 16th and 18th centuries, Nearly 4,000 Scottish residents were accused of witchcraft. Most of them were women. An estimated 1,500 people died as a consequence of these allegations. But the historical record contains no traces of a woman named Maggie Wall being executed during a witch hunt. Even more strangely, the monument didn't appear until 1866. The surrounding forest has gone by the name of Maggie Wall's Wood since 1829 but it still doesn't explain the lack of evidence pointing toward Maggie's existence and execution. It's possible that Maggie Wall was a real person whose records failed to survive into modern times. According to local legend, a member of a powerful family called the Rolos may have had an affair with Maggie and built the monument out of guilt. Some believe that Maggie was singled out and punished as a member of a group of women who attacked officials in an attempt to elect a new local minister. It's the only monument of its kind, leading others to speculate that it was built in memory of all Scotland's accused witches who were murdered. But nobody knows for sure. And as things currently stand, your guess is as good as mine. What do you think? Was Maggie Wall's story lost to history? Was she really a witch? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 5. A Shared Cave until recently, experts believe that the Neanderthals in Europe died out around 40,000 years ago, just 5,000 years after modern humans arrived, and that the two groups had no contact with each other. A new study challenging these finds claims that our species, Homo sapiens, entered Europe around 54,000 years ago, much earlier than previously thought. They not only lived alongside the Neanderthals, they took turns living in the Mandarin cave of southern France's Rhone region. In the words of prehistory expert Michael Petraglia, these findings have major implications for understanding the movement of modern humans out of Africa and the nature of our interactions with Neanderthals. This study is the result of over 30 years of excavation and research, which yielded hundreds of thousands of artifacts relating to both Neanderthals and humans. Included among the mix were several stone tools, or points, that early Homo sapiens used as spear tips. They resemble similar artifacts that were found in present-day Lebanon, nearly 1,900 miles away. This points toward the possibility that early humans may have traveled across the Mediterranean Sea, according to lead study author Ludovic Slimak. The team found no evidence of cultural exchanges between humans and Neanderthals, but they did detect signs that the cave changed hands between species over short time spans, including one transfer of ownership that took place over the span of about a year. Paleoanthropologist Katerina Harvati explained that while humans arrived in Europe earlier than originally thought, they didn't initially survive for long. They quickly died out and were replaced by Neanderthals until a later wave of Homo sapiens made their way to the continent. There's still a lot more left to learn about the migration of modern people, but this recent research adds one important piece to the puzzle. 
And now for number four, but first it's shout out time. Want to say a big thank you to Big Doug and Dawn Day. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with us in our little corner of the internet. If you are new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Number four, Elite Roman Mosaic. Archaeologists in London were recently taken aback when they began uncovering a rare and well-preserved Roman mosaic near the newly built shard glass skyscraper. The large 2,000-year-old piece of artwork was part of a triclinium, or dining room floor, inside of an upscale motel, also called a mansio, you know, like mansion. It was in places like this that high-ranking officials and their guests could enjoy fine dining, entertainment, and overnight accommodations. According to the team, the room would have been vividly painted and filled with dining couches, showcasing the floor mosaic that is just now being revealed to the world for the first time in centuries. Consisting of two panels, it's the largest Roman-era mosaic to be discovered in London in at least a half century. The largest of the two panels likely dates back to the 2nd or 3rd century. Archaeologist Dr. David Neal took a look at the piece and traced it to a team of mosaicists known as the Acanthus Group. They had their own unique local style, which they've become recognized for even in a historical context. Next door to the mansion, there was once another large Roman building. It was probably the residence of a wealthy family. Items including coins, jewelry, and decorated hairpins were all found at the site. They likely belonged to rich residents and visitors, and are a testament to the vast wealth that many privileged Roman citizens enjoyed. In 43 AD, the Romans invaded England and established Londinium. It became Roman Britain's largest settlement and was also an important port city. Londinium's population peaked at somewhere between 45,000 and 60,000 residents. Parts of the city are still visible today, including a section of Londinium's wall and parts of the amphitheater. Number 3. Desert Shrine While excavating a Neolithic campsite in a desert in Jordan, archaeologists found a shrine dating back 9,000 years ago. They discovered the ritual complex near large ancient animal traps known as kites, which were used for corralling wild gazelles for slaughter. Archaeologist Wael Abu Aziza described the site's uniqueness, particularly its remarkably preserved state. The shrine consisted of two standing stones bearing inscriptions of anthropomorphic figures, along with a hearth, altar, and a miniature representation of a gazelle trap. It's a major discovery that helps to shed light on the symbolism and culture of little-known Neolithic populations. Because the shrine is so close to the traps, experts believe that the people who lived here were specialized hunters and that the traps played a major role in their lives. Known to the local Bedouins as the works of the old men, the stone structures have been found in Jordan, Syria, and Saudi Arabia. And while their exact connection to the shrine is unclear, it seems evident that a single population built both. Number 2. Unique Ancient Burials Last summer, workers in southwestern Siberia discovered numerous burial sites while performing routine road and rail work. Researchers excavated several of the graves in the Republic of Caucasia and found that they all dated back to the Bronze Age. The graves included the remains of several women who were laid to rest wearing their finest clothing and jewelry. Surprisingly, the burials were found untouched by looters and mostly undamaged by the elements. Experts traced the graves to the ancient Karasuk culture, which encompassed numerous semi-nomadic groups who moved from place to place with their sheep, cattle, and horses. They also farmed during the summer. The burials date back between 3,500 years ago until the 9th or 8th century BC. They contained grave goods such as pottery, meat, and knives bearing carvings of animal heads. It's possible that the knives reached Russia's Far East via the nomadic tribes that made them, or they ended up there through trade. Finding ancient settlements in Siberia is tricky, because many, if not most of them, blend seamlessly into the landscape. In other words, someone has to be really looking in order to spot one. The Karasuks buried their dead inside sandstone enclosures that housed as many as 15 graves. As the deceased were laid to rest, the enclosure was filled and another was built next to it. The most important family member was usually buried in the middle of the pit and surrounded by the graves of others. Children were buried outside the enclosure. Sometimes bodies were placed directly into the soil, but they were also sometimes buried in box graves. This ancient culture also buried their pet dogs along with them. Number 1. 
Huge Roman Settlement For the past year, archaeologists in Aylesbury, England, have been excavating a 2,000-year-old Roman settlement and cemetery, which sits along an ancient road called Aikman Street. They honored the remains of 425 people, including around 40 headless skeletons. Many of the decapitated bodies were buried with the person's head between their legs or by their feet. It's possible that the beheaded individuals were social outcasts or criminally accused. But researchers think that decapitation may have also been a normal, but not very common practice in the Roman world. Additionally, the team found evidence of cremation, which was also a rare burial practice. The cemetery appears to be divided into two sections, indicating that people may have been grouped based on ethnicity, family, or tribe. Based on the number of remains, archaeologists believe that the town saw a sudden influx of residents during the mid to late Roman period, most likely due to increased farming. They expect to learn much more as they continue to carry out their research. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more incredible archaeological sites, let me know in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!